اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لسن نمبر 214 سورة لقمان آیا نمبر 16 to 19 یا بنیا او مائی سن انہا انڈیڈ ایٹ ان تکو اف ایٹ واز مسقال حبت من خردل اف ایٹ شوڈ بی دا ویٹ آف ا مسٹرڈ سیڈ فَتَكُنْ فِي صَخْرَةٍ And it should be within a rock أو فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ Or anywhere in the heavens أو فِي الْأَرْضِ Or anywhere in the earth يَأْتِ بِهَا اللَّهِ Allah will bring it إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَطِيفٌ خَبِيرٌ Indeed, Allah is subtle And He is acquainted Earlier we learned That Luqman, he was advising his son Isn't it so? And he was advising his son And in the middle, there was Jumla Mu'tarida, which was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ Right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enjoined upon the human being dutifulness, gratitude towards his parents. And after mentioning that, back to the advice of Luqman to his son. That he said, يَا بُنَيَّ O my dear son. And if you notice over here, The loving and affectionate style That oh my dear son It was mentioned earlier And it's mentioned here again And it will be mentioned later on again Many times what happens The first time we say something We're very very nice Isn't it? And then what happens? After some time What happens to our loving and affectionate manner? It wears out It doesn't continue But we see the consistency In the loving style In the affectionate manner It's not just at the beginning. It's not just at the middle. It's not just at the end. It's continuous. It's constant. So, Ya Bunayya. He says to him that, Innaha, indeed it. Indeed what? What does ha refer to? Meaning that deed, or that statement, or that trait, anything, in taku, if it is. Taku is actually takun. If it is misqala habbatin, if it is the weight of a seed even, with seed min khardal of a mustard, even if an action be the size of a mustard seed, even if a quality be a size of a mustard seed, even if a word be the size of a mustard seed, meaning extremely tiny, extremely small, extremely insignificant, Have you ever seen a mustard seed? It's extremely tiny. If you haven't, next time you go to the grocery store, go and check. Because if you search for a picture online, you won't be able to tell how small it is. The next time you go to the store, go and look for mustard seeds and look at their size. They're tiny. So if an action be, if a word be, if a trait be, مسقال حبة مسقال ساقاف لام What is it? To be equal in weight to something. And khardal, as I mentioned to you already, it's mustard seed and it's extremely tiny and it's one of the smallest known seeds or common seeds. One of the smallest common seeds that people use. So, مِسْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلْ Now, first of all, the mustard seed itself is very tiny. And because of that, it is khafi. Because of that, it is hidden. Because of its tiny size. Imagine if you see a mustard seed on the table, on the floor. Will you notice it? On the floor, no. Sometimes what happens, tiny, tiny things are on the floor, we don't notice them, but children, they pick them up. And then when they put them in their mouth, then we worry that what is it that they have put in their mouths. So, مِسْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلْ And now imagine this tiny mustard seed, if it would be, فَتَكُنْ فِي صَخْرَةٍ If it would be in a rock. Inside a rock. Just imagine. A rock is not hollow from inside. Isn't it so? It doesn't have an opening. It doesn't have a door. It doesn't have a window, a lid. No. It's completely sealed. Now imagine inside the rock is a mustard seed. You know how sometimes they have these fossils, right? And you have this bug or something that has been preserved inside a rock or something like that for years and years. And only when it's broken or it's cracked, then you discover it. Now just imagine something as tiny as a mustard seed inside a rock. The word sakhra is used for a huge rock, a huge boulder. That is very huge in its size. Awfis samawat. Or 
it would be anywhere in the skies. What? That mustard seed. Anywhere in the skies. Aw fil ard or that mustard seed would be anywhere in the earth. Somewhere in the skies, at the highest or the lowest part of it, in the most obscure place, aw fil ard, in the most concealed place in the earth, the highest or the lowest part of the earth. Imagine if you lose a mustard seed somewhere in the earth, can you find it? You can't. But what do we see over here? Yati biha Allah. Allah will bring it. It hasn't been said, Ya'lamhu Allah. What has been said, Ya'ti biha Allah. Allah will bring it. Because bringing it means, you know of it. And you have complete power and authority over it, ability over it. So Ya'ti biha Allah, Allah knows about it, and Allah will bring it forth on the day of resurrection, and He will call that person to account for it. Inna Allah, indeed Allah, He is Latif, He is subtle, and He is Khabir, He is fully aware, very well acquainted. Latif is from the root letters, Lam, Ta, Fa. And the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Latif has two meanings. First of all, one who is very kind. Because Lutf is to be kind, to be generous, to be polite, to be friendly. So Latif is one who is very kind, very affectionate, very generous. And Latif, secondly, also means one who is extremely subtle, one who knows about the fine realities of something as well. Because Lutf also is to be very subtle, to realize the minutest details of something, to know the minutest details of something. So he is Latif, he knows very well, and at the same time he is also very kind, and he is Khabir. He is all aware, he is very well acquainted of its location, nothing at all is hidden from him, nothing too big, Nothing too small, nothing at all. What do we see over here? That Luqman, he is explaining the knowledge of Allah to his son with an example. That Allah's knowledge is so vast and it is so complete. And it includes everything. Even the minutest of things, even the most hidden things. Even the things that are hidden inside others and even the things that are up in the skies and down in the earth. Anywhere in the skies, anywhere in the earth. No matter how deeply buried they are or no matter how exposed they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about everything. So he is explaining to his son about the power of Allah, the knowledge of Allah. That nothing at all can be hidden from Allah. And when a person, he says something, no matter how small of a word it may be, whether he whispers it, or he says it in his heart, or he says it out loud, does Allah not know about it? Of course He does. If a person does an action, even if it's extremely insignificant that other people don't even notice it, perhaps it was a glance, perhaps it was a smile, perhaps it was a word that he wrote, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of it. Any trait, any quality, anything that a person has, any characteristic that a person has, it could be hidden. Other people have no idea. They can never figure out. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. And if a person, he has this conviction that nothing at all is hidden from Allah, no deed, no word, no characteristic, then what will that lead to? that will lead to sincerity in action. Because a person will know that my Lord knows everything. He knows whatever I do. So a person will not expect praise from people. He will not expect acknowledgement from people. Nor will he waste his deed by showing off. Because many times, what do we want? That whatever we say, whatever we do, we want our deeds to be acknowledged. We want them to be noticed. We want them to be appreciated. And if people don't appreciate our deeds, what happens? We feel very discouraged. We feel we're not going to do it again. But if a person has this yaqeen, that no matter what I do, even if no person sees it, Allah knows about it, yati bi Allah, and Allah is latif, He is kind. He will see it, and if my deed is worth it, he will accept it and he will reward it. And he is khabir. Then this makes a person completely indifferent to people's appreciation. 
Many times what happens? Children, they're encouraged to do more how? That anything that they do, immediately we praise them, good job. And children, anything they do, they say good job to themselves as well. And if you don't say good job to them, what do they want? They will look at you, will wait for you to smile, acknowledge, and only then they will continue. Now, okay, this is something necessary when children are young. But what happens? We never stop it. So children, as they grow older, they will not do anything unless their deeds are acknowledged. What do children need? They need to realize that Allah sees me. He acknowledges my actions and He will reward me. Whether people see or they don't see. We see that the first thing that Luqman taught his son was what? لا تشرك بالله Don't do shirk with Allah. And now he's instilling in his son the fear of Allah. That whether or not I see you, whether or not somebody else sees you, who's watching you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person has this yaqeen that Allah is watching me, first of all, what's the benefit? That it makes him indifferent to people's praise, to people's appreciation. And this is extremely necessary. We praise our children so much, we boost their ego so much, we make them so arrogant from inside, that if people don't appreciate them, they get angry. If they don't get a gift, they get upset. If they're not thanked for the little things they do, they get very discouraged. If they don't get praised for what is their job, then they get very upset. This is not right. When can a person become free, indifferent to other people's appreciation? When he knows, Allah is watching me and I'm doing it for Allah. Whether I do it in a closed room or I do it out in the open, anybody finds out about it or anybody does not find out about it. And the second benefit of this is, that when a person has this yaqeen, that Allah is watching me, Allah knows about everything, then this really strengthens a person's character and personality. That he will not do anything wrong in front of people, and he will also not do anything wrong in secret, behind people when alone. Typically, what do we tell our children? I'm watching you. I'll find out. Isn't it? And... We send one person after our children, one person after our sibling, then the other person. And then we try to put so many restrictions on them and so many people to watch them, to guard them, to chaperone on them. But what do we see over here? If a child has this realization, my Lord is watching me, yes, my mom is not watching me, but Allah is watching me, then this will make him careful. This will make him a conscious person. Typically what happens? We make our children afraid. Look, look, that lady is looking at you. That man's watching. Behave well. Sit properly. Don't talk like this. Finish your food. What will they say? But what do we see over here? Whose fear is Luqman instilling? The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That no matter what I do, no matter what I say, wherever Allah is watching me. فَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِسْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِسْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ Whether it's something tiny a good deed, Allah, He knows it and He will show it to you. And if it's something evil, as very, very tiny, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again will show it to you. You will see it. So, we see that this awareness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me, this really strengthens a person's personality. It makes him a strong person. It makes him a conscious person. It makes him a responsible person. And it makes him hopeful of the reward of Allah and it makes him fearful of the punishment of Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is latif, He is immensely appreciative, He does not waste the reward of any person, and He is khabir. That if I do something wrong, nobody finds out about it, who knows? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And you know what has been said over here? Ya'ti bi Allah. Allah will bring it. No matter how much you try to hide it, no matter how much you try to conceal it, what will happen? Allah will expose it. He will reveal it. How? Sometimes in the dunya, but definitely, definitely in the hereafter. Because the day of judgment, wa shahidin wa mashhud. One of the meanings is that shahid, meaning the observer, and mashhud, one who is witnessed. Shahid is the person, and mashhud are all of his deeds. So all of the deeds that a person has been hiding in the dunya all of them will be exposed on the day of judgment. How? 
that when the deeds will be weighed, when they'll be put on the scales, and even before that, at the time of hashr, all those deeds that a person has been hiding, they will be exposed on that day. We learn from a hadith that in Musnad Ahmad, that if one of you should perform a deed in a rock with no holes in it, if one of you should perform a deed in a rock with no holes in it, now just imagine you're in an elevator, it's completely closed, no camera even, completely closed from all sides. If you do something there, say something over there, then what will happen? Allah will make that known to the people even. Allah will make that known. You cannot hide it. You cannot conceal it. And many, many times it happens that people try to conceal things, their actions, their words, sometimes for years even, but eventually what happens? Eventually what happens? It gets exposed. Right? Recently I was reading one of the newspapers that this person in Japan, he had killed and raped a British girl and he hid his identity, he cut his lip and he underwent so much plastic surgery so that he could not be identified. But after many, many years he was caught. He was identified. No matter what people do to hide their deeds, what happens eventually, even in the dunya, they are exposed. The reality is exposed. And if it's not exposed in this dunya, definitely it will be exposed in the hereafter. Because yati bi Allah. And this is not something difficult for us to understand today. Yati bi Allah. That whether something is hidden deep or it is up in the skies or anywhere in the earth, Allah can bring it. It's not difficult for us to understand today. Why? Because with one click, what can you do? You can easily roam around the whole world. You go to Google Earth and you can go to any street, any road. Isn't it? You can go and see so many things. People have put surveillance cameras. So, yati bi Allah. So in a way, he's making his son extremely conscious of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you are under surveillance. You are under surveillance. And when a person knows that he's under surveillance, how conscious he becomes. Isn't it? Immediately people, you know, their expression changes. The way they sit, the way they stand, the way they walk, it changes. Sometimes people are driving and all of a sudden if a cop car goes by, what perfect drivers they become. Everybody has their seat belts on. Everybody sitting properly. And unfortunately our children, who do we frighten them from? Sit in your place and put your belt on, otherwise the cop will come. Isn't it? This is what we scare them off. This is who we scare them off. But they need to realize that no matter where I am, whether at home or out, Allah is watching me. And I'm supposed to do right because Allah is watching me. I'm supposed to stay away from wrong because Allah is watching me. And this leads to ihsan. Isn't it so? Because what is ihsan? أَن تَعْبُدَ Allah كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ Ihsan cannot come unless and until with this realization. Because this is what makes a person behave properly. Isn't it so? Otherwise, he will follow his nafs, disregard other people completely, disregard the obligations, the prohibitions, and just follow his nafs. What brings ihsan? the realization that Allah is watching me. This is why we see that Luqman is known as Luqman Hakim. That look at the way he's advising his son. In such a non-threatening way, in such a neutral way, he's not instilling the fear of Allah by telling him, if you do wrong, Allah will throw you in hellfire. What is he telling him? That no matter what it is, in the rock, somewhere in the earth, somewhere in the sky, Allah knows and He will bring it forth. He's not saying, Allah is watching you and if I can't see you, He will punish you. Nothing like that. He's not threatening him. Isn't it so? It's a very non-threatening style. And this is when we see that advice becomes effective. And if we keep threatening children, this will happen, that will happen, you'll get punished, you'll get thrown in the fire, then eventually what happens? They get so used to that threat that it doesn't affect them anymore. It doesn't affect them at all. يا بني O my son أقم الصلاة Establish the prayer Establish the salah وأمر بالمعروف And enjoin what is right وانها عن المنكر And forbid what is wrong And then واصبر على ما أصابك And be patient over whatever befalls you And remember that إن ذلك من عزم الأمور Indeed all that is of the matters requiring Determination. More advice, more instruction, more vows. 
that ya bunayya, oh my dear son, again you see, loving style. He doesn't become a bit strict or harsh over here. Loving style. Because once children know that my parents love me, then what will happen? What will happen? It will develop trust. And then children will listen to their parents. We keep telling our children when they do something wrong, you're so bad, you're so bad. And what will happen eventually? Children will think they are bad and they show it. I remember this mother, she was once telling me that I always tell my children, you're so good, you can't do this. You're a good boy, you're a good girl. And then children really feel like that. That yes, I'm a good person, this is not something that I do. Right? So, Ya Bunayya, oh my dear son, أقم الصلاة Establish the salah. Pray salah. Tawheed, fear of Allah, and then after that, iqamat al-salah, worship. And notice how he tells him to establish the salah. The hukum, the command, is being given in singular form. It's very direct. Because sometimes what happens, we give very general instructions. It's not people should pray. What has been said? You should pray. Because sometimes we're very general in what we tell our children. You know, people should be doing this and people should be doing that and people should not do that. But how is he telling his children? You should pray. You should pray. You're supposed to pray. This is an obligation on you. So this is how we need to address the important topics. That address them directly. Don't generalize them. Don't say, we Muslims are supposed to do this. What should you say to him? What should you say to her? To children who are yours and children under your care. You should be doing this. This is what you're required to do. So, Ya Bunayya, Aqim salata and when can a person tell his or her child to pray salah? When they pray themselves. If you notice over here, the father is telling the son to do iqamah to salah. And for men, what is iqamah to salah? To pray where? In the masjid. When can a father tell his son to go pray in the masjid? Or pray in congregation? At least if not in the masjid. How? When? When he prays like that himself. So, Ya Bunayya Aqim Salata, Wa Amur Bil Ma'rufi, and command that which is good. Pray Salah to strengthen yourself, to do your own tarbiyah. And then command that which is good to others, to reform others, to help them become righteous as well. Wanha Anil Munkar, and also forbid from that which is wrong. If you notice over here, at first the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned. And of the rights of Allah, which is the most important one, iqamat salah And then don't just worry about yourself. Also be concerned about others. Tell them to do good as well. And if they do something wrong, stop them as well. Be responsible. Be alert. Be conscious. Don't be self-centered. Don't just be concerned about yourself, but also be concerned about who? Other people who are around you. Because a person cannot become righteous, he cannot become steadfast on righteousness unless and until what? Others around him are also doing the same. So, pray yourself and also wa'mur bil ma'roof. Also tell other people to do good. Tell other people to pray salah as well. And if other people are doing something wrong, don't turn a blind eye to it. Stop them. And you will find difficulties in doing this. Therefore, وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ Be patient over the difficulty that reaches you. And إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ This is of those matters for which determination is required. What is? ذَلِكَ refers to all that has been mentioned over here. إِقَامَةُ الصَّلَىٰ أَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ نَهِيَ الْمُنْكَ صَبْر This is of those deeds مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ What does عَزْم mean? Determination. When a person has made up their mind to do something, that no matter what happens now, I have to do it. You know, it's like, for example, when you're praying salah, you say, Allahu Akbar, your phone is ringing. Do you break your salah and go respond to the phone? Do you? No. Why? You've made up your mind, you have to pray, you have to pray. All of a sudden you feel like eating, will you go eat? No. You feel like sitting down, you feel like lying down, will you do that? No. Just do Allahu Akbar and that's it. Isn't it? Everything else is blocked off. This is what azm is. That once you've made up your mind, you have to do something. 
you are fully determined, you do it. And no matter what difficulty, what challenge comes before you, you don't get stopped because of it. You don't get derailed because of it. You stay focused on your work. This is why it has been said that فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ That once you have made up your mind, then what should you do? Rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and al-umur is a plural of amr. Azm al-umur means those matters, those necessary things regarding one must have firm determination. If a person does not have determination, he will not be able to do any of these things. If a person does not have firm resolve, he will not be able to pray consistently. He will not be able to tell other people to do good. He will not be able to stop them from wrong. And he will not be able to do sabr. You understand? To do all of these four things, what do you need? Determination. And without determination, you'll end up nowhere. Now we see over here, that in the advice that is mentioned in this ayah, that Luqman, he is awakening his son's consciousness. Right? He's making him an alert person. He's encouraging him to live a conscious life, an alert life. And what does he start that with? The command to pray. Because a person who prays, his heart is alive. Isn't it so? أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ He remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person will remember Allah, he will be a conscious person. He will be conscious about his surroundings. And such a person, what will he do? He will command that which is right and forbid that which is evil. Because in the salata, tanha anil fahsha iwal munka. It's not possible that a person who prays salah consistently finds other people not praying and he doesn't care about them. Finds that people are doing something wrong and he does not care. No. A person who will pray, definitely his heart will become conscious and alive. He will never become indifferent to people. Never at all. And when a person will do Amr bil ma'roof, nahi anil munka, what will that lead to? Difficulties. Right? But that difficulty will not make him give up. He will have to have sabr. Which is why sabr is mentioned. What do we learn? Wasta'inu bis sabri wa salah. This is why iqamatu salah is so necessary. If you don't pray, you cannot tell other people to do good. You know that? You can't. And you cannot stop them from doing wrong. Because what will give you the confidence to have sabr, the ability to have sabr? Salah. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And whatever challenges that a person does face, in telling other people, they will not make him lose his determination either. Why? وَلَا يَسْتَخِفَّنَّكَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُقِنُونَ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ That is of those matters for which you need determination. Other people should not make you so weak and light that they say one thing to you and that's it, you lose all your confidence. But on the other hand, a person who does not pray, whose heart is not alive, whose heart is heedless, then this person is heedless about himself and he's also heedless about others. You understand? The life of the heart begins with what? Iqamat salah Many times what happens? That if a person asks, does this person pray? What will they say? Oh, you're being so strict. How is it possible you find no person who prays five times a day? No, it is possible to find people five times a day. This is one of the basic things, basic requirements. Because a person who prays salah and a person who does not pray salah, they're completely different. One who prays is conscious about his actions, about his words, about other people, about the deen. And one who does not pray, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. They're completely two different people. And this is something extremely important that a person is concerned about his well-being and also the well-being of others. Because you might say, you should only focus about yourself. Why are you worried about others? Whether they pray or not, whether they do good or they do bad, why are you worried about them? This is something very important. Why? If you keep yourself clean and your surroundings are dirty, will you not get dirty? Will you not? Of course. Like for example, if you go to shower in a washroom that's extremely filthy, extremely filthy, will you want to shower there? No. You'll get worried that by the time I finish showering, I'll perhaps be more dirty. Isn't it so? 
So you clean yourself and you also have to clean your surroundings. This is why أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَ And many times what happens? We tell our children, do good, be good, pray. But what happens? If their friends are not like that, will they be able to pray? Will they be able to do good? Impossible. So children need to have this realization that I need to do good myself and I need to tell other people to also do good. And only a confident child can do this. Isn't it? Only a confident child can do this. He can only tell other people to do good and stop them from wrong. And if you notice, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ is related to personal life. And وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهَرْدِ الْمُنْكَرِ That is related to what? Communal life, societal life. And that is necessary because a person cannot live in a society selfishly. And this work, it requires a lot of effort and a person must have a lot of sabr. Many times we'll see that people, when it comes to deen, they think that salah and fasting in the month of Ramadan, they're extremely important, going for umrah once in a while, that's it. And when it comes to telling other people about the deen, that's not our responsibility. That's not something that we should be concerned about. But what do we see over here? A perfect balance. Both the things are necessary. You tell your child, pray, pray, pray. And you don't tell other people to pray. What will happen? Will they not affect your children? Will they not? Of course they will. They will definitely affect your children. So if you want your family to be good, to be on the right path, then you also have to spread this goodness. You also have to spread this khair. You cannot become selfish and self-centered when it comes to deen. You have to be concerned about others. You have to create an environment in which you can grow, your family can grow, your children can grow. And if you're only concerned about yourself, believe me, you cannot grow. This is why we see that even within a household, within a family, if a person alone is struggling to pray, nobody else is praying along with them, how long will they be able to continue? Not for very long, unless and until other people join them. Isn't it so? Because you have to go somewhere. You're the only person who wants to pray at that time. Other people are like, no, no, let's go, let's go. We're getting late. Will your salah not get affected? Of course it will. So where this is necessary in a family, it's also necessary in the community. And many times, why is it that people don't like telling other people? Why? What's so difficult about it? Because the fear of getting a negative reaction. They will not listen. And this is the reality. When you tell people do something good, some people will listen, other people, they will not listen. Isn't it? But just because some people will not listen, should you give up? No. What do you need at that time? Sabr. Wasbir ala ma asabak. Be patient over whatever hits you. Now this is general and also specific in the context. Wasbir ala ma asabak. Specific in the context what? That when you tell other people to do good and you face opposition, what should your behavior be? Of sabr. But in the general sense, any difficulty that comes your way, what should be your behavior? Of sabr. Whether that difficulty is in your nafs, in your badan, in your mind, anything. That you are hurt, you are tired, you are exhausted, you have a lot of work, somebody has been harsh to you, what should you do that time? Sabr. And inna dhalika min azm al-umur. It is of those matters which require a lot of determination. That only those people can do this work who have a strong willpower. Which work? Telling other people to do good. Spreading khair. Because you see when it comes to doing good yourself, who do you have to fight against? Just yourself. And it's relatively easier to do that compared to telling other people. So what do you need over there? Determination. Strong willpower That whether people listen or not Whether they laugh at me Or they make fun of me Whatsoever I have to tell them It's my obligation And who can do it? A person who realizes that this is my obligation That salvation, success lies in this I cannot be successful Until and unless I tell other people And isn't it so? Isn't this a reality? What have we learned in Surah At-Tawbah? What have we learned throughout the Qur'an? That it's our obligation to spread this khair. 
if we limit it to ourselves, then we're not giving the haqq. Unfortunately today, what do people think? That mind your own business. And this is what they promote as well. Isn't it so? That you do what you have to do and let me do whatever I have to do. You keep concerned with your problems and let me deal with mine. Don't interfere in my life. Don't tell me what to do and don't stop me from doing what I'm doing. Isn't it? This is what we think is the right way. But this is not the right way. Because if you don't stop other people from wrong, then that wrong is also going to affect you. It's also going to affect your family. It's also going to hit you. What do we learn? وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً that fear the trial that will not only strike those people who have done wrong. No. It may also strike those people who have not done wrong. So how should you fear it? By stopping other people from doing wrong. Because if they continue to do wrong, then the consequences will also hit you. But we fear sarcastic remarks, we fear mockery and harsh words, but this fear should not get in the way. It should not stop us from doing what we have to do. It should not stop us from telling other people. Because if a person is stopped by just the words of other people, then does he have any determination? Nothing. No determination. You see, when it comes to the deen, whether it is practicing the deen yourself or telling other people about the deen, you need azm. You need determination. Because sometimes your body will not cooperate. Sometimes your family will not cooperate and sometimes the world around you will not cooperate. But doesn't mean you stop. No. Whatever is important is important. Like for example, I'm amazed at how people who go to work, who take their work seriously, what happens to them? Even if they're sick and exhausted and there's a snowstorm outside, what will they do? They will still go to work. Whether it means not going to their child's doctor's appointment. Many times fathers, they never go to their children's doctor's appointments. Why? They're at work. The mother is taking the child every time. Isn't it so? Sometimes the woman herself, she's expecting and she's going to the appointments herself. The husband, he cannot come. Why? He's busy at work. What do you need at that time? Determination. What gives you determination? When you realize your work is important, it is necessary. So when you realize that Amr bil ma'roof, nahi an al-munkar is necessary, then no matter what you will do, it will give you the determination. It will give you the confidence. If you think about it, the work that people do for dunya, why will they go even if they're sick, even if there is a terrible snowstorm? Because you need to survive in this dunya. Isn't it? What about surviving in the akhirah? What about surviving in the Akhirah? Isn't that something that we should be concerned about? Of course. So what do we see over here? That Salah, Amr bil Maruf, Nahi al Munka, Sabr over difficulty. Who can do it? A person who has firm determination. Everybody cannot do it. Only those people who have determination. So it's as though he's telling his son that you have to have determination. And if I'm telling you to do this, I know that you can be determined. I know that you can have Azm al-Umur. And this is just like mountain climbing. Can everybody do it? Mountain climbing. Can everybody do it? No. What do you need to do that? Determination. Just the other day somebody was telling me about how one of their relatives is a um, deportation officer. So any illegal immigrants or someone? They are responsible for finding them and take them out of the country and travel with them and, you know, leave them. And the kind of work that they do, it involves a lot of risk. A lot of risk. And their family is concerned that why are you doing this? Just leave this work, do something else. But he's like, no, I love this work. It's so challenging. It's so challenging. This is why I love to do this work. And I was thinking at that point that anything that you like, no matter how challenging it is, no matter how difficult it is, you will do it. Anything that you find is important, you will do it. Just like mountain climbing. right? 
if you want to do it, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how risky it is, you could slip and that's it, your backbone could break. You could lose your life. But what is it that gives people the strength to do it? Determination. Isn't it? Confidence. The end result. So similarly, if a person wants high darajat in the hereafter, high ranks in the hereafter, just like a person wants to get to the top of the mountain, what does he need to do? Effort. What does he need? Determination. And he needs to keep going. You might wonder, what's the point of climbing the mountain? Can you not see the same view in a picture? Of course you can. Just go in a helicopter and see. But it's different. It's a different experience. What you can see from the top of the mountain, that view you cannot get from anywhere else. And you cannot enjoy that view either, unless and until you've climbed the mountain yourself. So determination is required to get to Jannah. إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Okay, we'll listen to the recitation. إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ One thing that's extremely important is that many things that we tell our children to do, that we encourage young people to do, they are difficult. And when they say that this is extremely difficult, sometimes we say, no, no, it's not difficult. You're just thinking it's hard. It's not actually hard. But what is the more realistic approach? That yes, it's hard. It's difficult. In nadalika min azmil umur. But this is why there's so much reward. Isn't it? So if you tell your children, yes, this is something that's hard, but you have to do it, because only then will you be successful, then this is a much better way than undermining the effort that they have to put in and belittling the work that they're doing. In nadalika min azmil umur. Acknowledge the difficulty. But at the same time, encourage them, motivate them with the reward that's at the end. Also one thing I want you to notice over here is that he is telling his son that وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفُ وَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرُ What do we think? Whose responsibility is it to do أَمْرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفُ وَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرُ Who is supposed to do it? Typically, what do we think? Adults, isn't it? The young children, they have nothing to do with this. It's the scholars who do it. And if children, if ever they do correct us, which they do many times, what do we say? Oh, you don't know. Isn't it? But this is not the right way. Even children should be encouraged to do Amr bil ma'roof wa nahiyan al munkar Because only when they're conscious as children, then their consciousness will grow as they grow. And as they grow older, then they will have the confidence to tell people. You understand? And when they do correct us, when they do encourage us, we should accept what they're telling us. Not telling them, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Because we don't like to admit our mistakes before our children. Hmm? Before little children. Even if they're not ours, if they're little siblings, we don't like to acknowledge our mistakes before them. We see that there should be a balance in instilling the fear and instilling the love of Allah in children. And in the advice of Luqman Hakim, that in Allah Latifun Khabir, there is both love and fear. Latif, that he is kind, he is affectionate, he will appreciate your efforts. And Khabir, he knows, he knows very well about what you do. So we see what a good balance there is of both love and fear. Because sometimes we go to extremes. Either we focus only on love, or we focus only on fear. There should be moderation, there should be balance, both are necessary. Because then children will wonder, does Allah like this? Does Allah dislike this? And then they'll want to do it. Now many of you might be thinking, we don't have any children, this is not relevant to us. How can you relate this to yourself? My question, that you might be thinking that you don't have any children, so how can you apply this in your life? So children who are around you, whether they are your siblings or they are your younger cousins, or perhaps you're babysitting someone, or you're volunteering to teach a class of children. So these are things that you can be focusing on. In ذَٰلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ umur, ذَٰلِكَ also refers to salah. In order to pray salah, what do you need? Determination. Isn't it so? Because sometimes you're the only person. Or sometimes you're so busy in your work, you're so occupied, that you literally have to pull yourself out. You have to pull yourself away. You have to force yourself. What do you need at that time? Azmul umur. So whether it is praying salah 
or it is telling other people to do good, stopping them from wrong, or doing sabr, you need determination. And without determination, you cannot get anywhere. Okay, we'll listen to the recitation. <laughs> 